We are delighted to have you with us for part one of our two-part series entitled Living with the Himalayan Masters, Spiritual Experiences of Swami Rama. Join us as we trek through grand mountains and deep valleys to learn alongside a renowned master, Sri Swami Rama. I will tell you how I grew up and how I was trained about the great sages with whom I lived and what they taught me, not through lectures and books, but through experiences. Swami Rama. Like a multifaceted diamond, Swami Rama had many brilliant talents. He was an extraordinary spiritual master, a medical doctor, renowned scientist, prolific author, gifted singer, artist, and humanitarian. Even before his conception, his grand and auspicious destiny was known among the Himalayan sages. Swami Rama was born in 1925 to a learned Brahmin family. His parents lived in the Garhwal Himalayas in northern India. His father practiced meditation and was a disciple of the well-known and respected Himalayan spiritual master Bengali Baba. Swami Rama went on to found the non-profit Himalayan Institute of Yoga Science and Philosophy as well as the International Retreat Center Sadhana Mandir Ashram. Swami Rama also established a large medical resource in Dehradun, northern India. This facility served millions of underprivileged people in the region, giving them access to water, health care, sanitation, and education. His autobiography, Living with the Himalayan Masters, was published in 1978 and is considered one of the greatest spiritual classics of all time. Swami Rama's personal quest for truth and enlightenment is relayed in remarkable stories which are both entertaining and illuminating. As a young boy, Swami Rama is very curious and full of mischief. As he begins his search for enlightenment, Swami Rama must overcome many obstacles, such as having to distinguish between false gurus and the real masters. His story of transformation sows seeds of hope and faith in the hearts of readers, bringing them inspiration in their own journeys of spiritual elevation. Swami Rama speaks to the reader in a friendly and conversational manner, like having a talk with a wise, trustworthy friend. In a poetic and enthralling writing style, Swami Rama describes the philosophy and benefits behind practices such as meditation. Any person can achieve peace without the need for a structured religion. After being initiated into spiritual practice at the tender age of three by his master, Bengali Baba, Swami Rama was raised in the cave monasteries of the Himalayas. For 45 years at all altitudes of the beautiful Himalayas, he practiced and learned from many sages, including Mataji of Assam, a 96-year young sage who never slept the Gudari Baba who taught him the value of direct experience. Swami Rama also had memorable encounters with spiritual personalities such as Mahatma Gandhi, Sri Aurobindo, and Ravindranath Tagore. Swami Rama traveled extensively along the path of the Himalayas, teaching Hindu and Buddhist scriptures in various monasteries. At the age of 21, he went to Tibet to meet with his Grand Master and to further his knowledge of yogic practices. Per his Master's instructions, Swami Rama lived in complete isolation for 11 months in a cave with a tiny opening. His food was left outside and he cleansed his body through vigorous yogic techniques. He emerged with determination to serve humanity and to build a bridge between science and spirituality. Let's go to the garden to water the beautiful vegetables and fragrant flowers. We'll be right back 
here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Living with the Himalayan Masters, Spiritual Experiences of Swami Rama, Part 1 of 2. In the first section of Living with the Himalayan Masters, Swami Rama paints the picture of the Himalayas. The reader learns of the yogi language, the valleys blossoming with orchids and lilies, the culture of the people who live on the Garhwal and Komayan mountains, and the cave monastery lifestyle. Swami Rama lovingly refers to the mountains as his mother who brought me up in her natural environment and inspired me to live a particular style of life. In the following interview excerpt, Swami Rama recounts when he first visited Gangotri, a Hindu pilgrim town in India. Well, I was 13 years of age when I first visited Gangotri and stayed in a cave which we saw yesterday, it's two miles towards Gomuk with my brother, who was older than me, of course, and I stayed three winters here meditating. It is not so easy as you people think. It's difficult to live here, but then austerity is a part of life for a Swami, and uh, only real sadhakas who have aim, who have goal, who want to attain samadhi or self-realization, then alone stay here during winters. This whole place is covered with snow, the roads are blocked. From October to April? Uh, October to April, and uh, there is perfect calmness and solitude. So you brought all your food first into the cave? Uh, minimum necessities like mong dal, potatoes, rice, and the vegetables we store from the forest we pick up dry and live here. I came here in 1938 and during that time there were a few enlightened and sages here and amazingly they lived nude without any protection of fire. Even in winter time? In winter time, all the time, in the caves, in little thatched hearts, and uh, they were examples for the sadhakas to practice austerity, and it was something great, but I don't find such sages these days. There might be one or two mm -hmm. hidden somewhere in the caves, as you have seen many caves yeah. all along. Yeah. There are a few hidden sages here, and there are places from where they get food once in a day, and then they quietly go and stay in the caves. Yes. There are certain kriyas they do, pranayama, you see, and with the help of pranayama, with the help of mind control, with the help of the kriyas they do, practice, one can survive in cold. Yes. Of course. If somebody is a seeker and really wants to seek truth, this place will be helpful to him. Well, there are many fascinating places in America, beautiful mountains, but the question is, those mountains are not like Gangotri mountains. There is a long tradition since ages, sages stayed in these mountains, and these mountains vibrate the spirituality, and it's lacking in those mountains of the West. Otherwise, mountains are mountains. It is a tradition for Indian sages to go to the Himalayas, meditate, and live in the caves, 
leads solitude, uh, quiet life, and it's a long tradition. Those who are real meditators, they can help the world in suffering humanity, even from the caves and quiet corners of the Himalayas, by praying for them, by sending their thought waves and helping the world. They are powerful people. This perennial sound of the Ganges leads one to a state of meditative mood. It doesn't allow any external sound to intervene. And it's very pleasant here. I wish I could come back again and stay here, meditate, and pass the rest of my life here. In Living with the Himalayan Masters, Swami Rama shares his experiences with different spiritual paths and religions, indicating that there is more than one way to realize God. Therefore, one should follow the spiritual path that suits him or her while being respectful of others. Furthermore, Swami Rama is scientific in his approach and uses science to explain some of the miracles that happen around sages. From his experiences with the sages, the first thing he learned is to get rid of the delusion of fear. The goal is to discipline the mind in order to control one's thought, speech, and action. To share the wonderful rewards of spiritual practice, Swami Rama established the Sadhana Mandir Trust and Ashram in Rishikesh, northern India in the 60s. He later brought tour groups from the U.S. and abroad to stay at the ashram and study yoga and meditation. The quiet and serene atmosphere permeates the ashram, making it ideal for sadhana, which is a spiritual practice of turning one's focus inward. Today, the Sadhana Mandir Ashram continues to serve as an international retreat center for sincere aspirants to practice meditation in a spiritually elevating environment. For more information on living with the Himalayan Masters, please visit himalayaninstitute.org and hitindia.org. We are grateful to the compassionate Swami Rama for imparting his wisdom and precious experiences as we look forward to learning more in part two of our two-part series. <laughs>